In the name of Allah, the beneficent and the merciful. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Hope you're doing great by the mercy and grace of Almighty Allah. My name is N. A. Sakeb. I'm your IELTS and spoken English trainer and student visa consultant. Been training the students and professionals at the platform of Genius Institute Lahore for the last 20 plus years. Dear friends, today we have got in front of us one of the students of Genius Institute Lahore. And he will introduce shortly and we're going to have his mock test of IELTS speaking. So, uh, can I have your name, please? Yeah, you can know my name. My name is Hassan Abbas and you can address me by Hassan. Okay, Mr. Hassan, can I see your identification, please? Yes, absolutely. Here you are. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Hassan Abbas, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, where are you from, Mr. Hassan? Basically, I'm uh, an outsider. I've been li living here for uh, I've been living here for two weeks in Lahore. Basically, I'm from Shorkot. It's uh, located on the bank of River Chenab. It's not a too much big city. It has basic facilities along with the hospitals, uh, colleges, and other educational institutions as well. How did you find Lahore? You you've been in Lahore for the last two two uh, two two weeks. I beg your pardon. It's been so fantastic experience. I would say that uh, it's. Uh, uh, an historical city it remembers us of Mughal Emperor as well and there are many uh, food uh, restaurants uh, as well as many kinds of markets supermarkets as well and there's so much to do many kinds of people I meet here and I love being here uh, uh, that's great uh, fantastic now I would like to ask you some question regarding people you study or work with so who do you spend most time studying or working with? Why and why not? I'm a learner and I spend most of my time studying alone. I have no study groups, but uh, at the evening I have got a group uh, for a recent two days and I'm studying uh, and I'm preparing with them for my IELTS exam, especially the speaking as well as the writing modules. But most of the time at the nights or at the daytime, I prefer and I feel comfortable studying alone in my study room. That's great. And what kinds of things you study or work on with other people and why? As I told you recently, I'm not working. I'm a student. So uh, I am learning English language to in order to pass my IELTS exam. So I throughout the day uh, practice speaking English as well as writing, listening and reading English. So overall, I would uh, say that I'm practicing my speaking English as it is a very useful life skill. And is it it is international language too. OK, great. And are there times when you study or work better by yourself? Why, why not? Yes, I to, as I told you, I feel very comfortable uh, by studying in my studying room uh, because uh, I don't think so studying with a, uh, having uh, a study group and uh, exchanging ideas is better. I would say that uh, uh, when I'm uh, alone, I have uh, many kinds of ideas to improve my study and how and I uh, can find out how better I'm in studies. But uh, uh, at times I find it uh, best to study with my students in the evening too okay uh, I would like to ask you one more question is it important to like the people you work or study with no I don't think so my thoughts are on the idea that uh, like uh, uh, that loving the people who uh, work or study with you is not too much essential however uh, uh, everyone should be careful of the people who are uh, who are around him and I would say that uh, uh, people who are st uh, students, they uh, should like in order to have uh, good uh, students or good uh, friends as a learner. Thank you very much indeed. Your part one is over. Your part one is going to start and uh, you are being given the two card now. The task card, here you go. And you can make notes if you like. Here you go. That's your card, cue card now. So while he is making uh, his cue card ready, uh, what I just asked you one or two things, rather will tell you one or two things were important. So this is very important time. You mustn't waste it. Uh, make your notes uh, as uh, you know, you've been given some outlines, uh, some, some bullet points. 
So if you happen to make the notes, prepare them well, they're going to help you out in speaking for two minutes. Uh, that's a longish kind of presentation. Uh, you haven't, if you haven't practiced before you appear in the examination, this uh, might give you a tough time for speaking two minutes uh, continuously. So that's a brainstorm, brainstorming time. You can make notes if you like, and they'll be very useful for you while speaking. Your one minute is over. Uh, you are asked to start speaking on, on this topic for two minutes now, please. Okay, today I'm going to share my experience uh, of tourism that I had two years ago with my family. I went to northern areas and other uh, areas and cities that are close to these areas like Islamabad and Murray as well. Basically, I'm from Shorkot. So we had a recently a journey of six hours from Shorkot to Islamabad. There we visited many famous places. For example, if I talk about uh, malls, uh, that is <coughs> Centaurus Mall as well. Then and at the evening, we arrived in Murray. That uh, is a very beautiful place. At night, it seems that there are stars on the ground if we look at the house lights of the houses that are like twinkling stars and after that if we move towards uh, the other areas uh, that are full of nature's beauty that are like captivating it it is uh, it was so astonishing experience for me as well as for my family we went there for just uh, uh, to tour these areas in order to uh, enjoy the fascinating uh, nature that is full of lush green beauty mountains there lots of animals birds and different kinds of people most of the foreigners visit there as well as if I talk about my activities, what we did there, we enjoyed a lot there. We did barbecue at the night and we visited some waterfalls as well. It was Kashmiri waterfall uh, that was on the bank of uh, a river. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't remember the name of the river, but uh, we had to cross uh, by a lift uh, to the other side. We need. Uh, we uh, went to the other side of that. Uh, river and uh, the water of that uh, uh, rainfall was too cold and we enjoyed their mangoes and delicious foods uh, especially our uh, desi and local foods as well and the food was too uh, uh, much amazing uh, and thank I you have thank no you words very much your two minutes that. are over you have spoken comprehensively on, on this topic i'm going to ask you now the questions some more questions uh, as you know it's a discussion round and the third round you are being given us uh, you are the questions regarding your part two there are some follow up questions about attractive places and tourism now so the first question would be what are the most popular tourist attractions in your country there are numerous popular uh, tourist attracting places in my country. If I talk about uh, from seas, from the seas or oceans to the mountains, there's a long list of uh, such kind of places. For example, uh, sightseeing at uh, Karachi, there are many kinds of restaurants and uh, having a, uh, a ride on the boat uh, through the sea and other uh, popular places such as uh, museums and palace. As, uh, for example, if I talk about uh, uh, there are many forts in Lahore as well as well as in Bahawalpur, uh, like Noor Mahal. Uh, if we move towards the upper areas, like uh, mountainy areas, Murray, Islamabad, and the atmosphere of these areas is uh, too much amazing, and uh, that suits uh, the people who come uh, from abroad and as well as from all over the country. So, like places, there are uh, according to the uh, choice of the people, and they captivate. And uh, my country earns too much money from tourism. Absolutely right we need to invest some more money on tourism mm -hmm. for making our attractions more attractive yeah. there are natural sightseeing places in pakistan but we need to advertise and make it familiar to the foreigners so that they may come inside our mm -hmm. country and may spend a lot of money and this will be a big way of uh, foreign exchange uh, bringing foreign exchange to our country and uh, the progress of any country actually depends on its strong economy and if we have lots of foreign exchange from other countries it's going to help us out a lot now the next question is um, do you believe that tourist attractions for the young people are different from that of old people 
Um, that's very tricky question, but I would like to speak about it. Uh, to answer this question, I would say that there is a little bit uh, uh, similarity between uh, the uh, popular places or the uh, places to uh, worth seeing like by the young people in my country as well as by old people from abroad. Uh, like uh, people old, if I talk about the old people, they like to uh, visit old places there, uh, where there is calm <coughs> everywhere and they can just relax uh, to in order to relax just because they have uh, done too much work uh, throughout their life and they just want to relax and if I talk about uh, the uh, youngest generation these days if, of my country as well as people from abroad they like uh, enjoying rowing boats uh, by themselves as well as by the driver or by hiring a boat and uh, uh, moving to the other areas or popular malls like Centaurus Mall, Emporium Mall in Lahore as well and enjoying cheerlift that is a very uh, popular uh, thing uh, or popular ride uh, above the mountains in okay, hilly okay. areas that, that's right that, that's right uh, do you believe the governments should uh, facilitate the you know the people who love tourism for example the museums and galleries should be free of cost to visit for the people Yes, in order to increase our uh, budget and foreign exchange, uh, uh, the government of Pakistan as well as uh, other governments must make essential steps in this regard, uh, providing uh, facilities and advantages uh, for the uh, to the people who visit uh, different kinds of places like museums and other places, uh, uh, brings too much uh, benefit to the nation as well as to the country too. So I would say that uh, making uh, essential steps is uh, too much necessary these days uh what do you think about uh, tourism overall do you believe that it is uh, important for the progress of country's economy yes of course it is uh, too much essential for the progress of the country and uh, because uh, if i say that for example if we take an example of a state known as dubai it was initially not well known and now it is uh, the youngest and the most popular and expensive city like there is burj khalifa and uh, uh, other islands that are, uh, are built artificially by man that are not by nature that are built in the sea and uh, most of, uh, if I talk about the other states of UAE, they, they are making essential steps in this regard. They are, uh, they are making expensive hotels and other uh, uh, places of, uh, to attract <clears throat> and to captivate people from abroad. Yeah, uh, that's, that's lovely, uh, li very good information you are passing on. Uh, is it necessary for the tourists to learn the language of the country they are visiting because uh, sometimes they feel problems regarding the language. So is it important for the tourists to learn the language of the country they're visiting? Yes, it is a little bit uh, important for uh, the visitors from abroad as well as uh, to learn international language too. Because if they are staying in a very expensive or a popular hotel, it could uh, it would not bring uh, too much problem for them if they uh, go to the uh, popular places uh, like Emporium Mall, Nishad Hotel in Lahore, as well as uh, other impor uh, other important and essential malls that uh, offer too much facilities like Centaurus Mall in Islamabad capital territory so if they learn basic language uh, the country they are visiting it would help a lot to exchange what they want to say and to understand what other people want to Hassan, thank you very much indeed your time's up actually you've spoken brilliantly well you would if i were you i would give you uh for example uh, i would appreciate myself for example if i were you but uh, i would really I'm impressed that you've spoken very good, really, regarding the topics. The questions are, in particular, part one. You have justified part two. Your part three is also not an exception. So these are all three parts. You have spoken brilliant well, uh, brilliantly well. So I would give you seven band scores, at least if I were the examiner. And uh, maybe if you have to just, uh, I mean, give some some more. For example, at certain areas, you were... Uh, you couldn't perform very highly excellently. So you need to have a bit of more training. And I mm -hmm. saw that maybe uh, sometimes, you know, 
You were also showing a bit of emotion in your face. Mm -hmm. This is really important. And there was also rise and fall uh, in your sentences. Proper pauses were being taken. And uh, this rise and fall is actually, actually the intonation in language. So intonation was great. Your uh, pronunciation was understandable. And uh, your fluency was remarkable. And uh, as far as grammatical structures are concerned, they are not exception case. So, I mean, everything was fine. You need to fine tune further in order to have much more training, um, um, uh, grabbing more, more bands codes. I remember the exam, and, and, and you're additionally, which is not important, I mean, which is not important as far as the marks are concerned. But mm -hmm. as regards uh, the I mean, uh, overall performance, the confidence make a lot of difference. So, you were confident and your fluency was also nice. So, uh, wish you all the very best of love for the examination. It was a brilliant interview I've conducted so far. God bless you. Take care and That's have a good weekend, you. please. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? My name is N. A. Sakeb. I'm an IELTS and spoken English trainer and student with a consultant. I've been training the students and professionals for the last 20 plus years. The platform of Genius Institute Lahore. Dear friends, we're going to have the series of mock tests. Uh, Mr. Adil Bhatt is in front of me. He's the first victim. I beg your pardon. He's the first, uh, you know, candidate whom I would uh, just interview and will let you know about all the details how the part one, part two, and part three are conducted. So, Mr. Adil, let's start formally. Uh, my name is N. A. Sakeb. I'm your IELTS examiner in speaking, speaking module today. Uh, we're going to have a uh, speaking mock test. So, uh, can I see your identification, please? Uh, sure. Here it is, please. So, here you go. Your name's uh, full name's... Uh, my full name is Adil Asif, but you can call me Adil. Okay, Mr. Adil, um, uh, what's your home uh, hometown? Uh, basically, I belong to Lahore. That is beautiful place. Fascinating things are available here. Captivating areas are available here, like gardens, like shopping malls. Lots of food seats are over there. Uh, foreigners always come uh, to the our uh, uh, here because of the food streets and different. Uh, they always try to look and uh, always try to spend their time here because the people they are very loving the. Uh, the beautiful historical places are also available here uh, uh, because uh, the hospitals and the other things are available as compared to the rural areas are never available. So these kinds are the stuff available here. So that's why the, the, that is a beautiful place. Uh, the road and infrastructures we talk about uh, that is way some as compared to other cities. So uh, Lahore is the uh, you can call uh, as a Paris of the city of uh, Pakistan. Oh my God, Paris. Okay, so what are the most fascinating places in Lahore? Uh, well, uh, fascinating, if we talk about captivating uh, uh, places in the Lahore is uh, 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 the food street of Lahore. Uh, whenever you want to eat sp something special, definitely I will recommend to you, please uh, go to Anarkali and uh, to always uh, food streets are available. There. It's, it's a new Anarkali and it, it is old Anarkali. Both are different and uh, lots of stuffs and uh, hotels, uh, uh, food chains are also available over there. And uh, if you want to uh, buy something, uh, you can go easily uh, different shopping malls are available here are you a student or doing a job somewhere uh Right now, we talk about I am doing a job. Before uh, 15 years, I left my studies uh, due to some circumstances. So that's why um, after that, I joined my uh, uh, organization that, that we are working as a multinational uh, in uh, hospitality industries and I uh, joined as a crew members. And uh, I, I've seen lots of stuff, the circumstances at my, um, in my life. But right now, we're doing a workings as a, a branch manager after 15 years. That is very uh, excellent and uh, Thanks for me. You can. Uh, Thank you very much. I'm going to ask you some more questions about telephoning now. So, how often do you make telephone calls? Why? Why not? 
uh, well, truly speaking, uh, I don't have idea. To, uh, I always try to uh, pick calls, or sometimes whenever I feel feel uh, to, I want to talk, or sometimes uh, most of the time, uh, if we are in available uh, with meetings, so then uh, we don't try to call. We just uh, try uh, talk on messages, uh, WhatsApp messages, or casual messages on for, and uh, lots of websites are available. Available, so uh, we try to make most of the time uh, on uh, messages instead of phone calls. All right, and to whom you remain basically engaged talking to most of the time? Uh, pardon me, please, can you explain me? So, please? my question is, who do you spend the most time talking to on telephone? Uh, most time, totally speaking, I told you because we are professionals and we don't have specific time to talk to uh, long talks to uh, to the peoples. Uh, so most of the time, we are related to our vendors uh, in a day, especially for different vendors like Coke brands, uh, Ken, and different vendors are available over there. So uh, we are engaged to the peoples, and uh, if we have times, so we talk about to our homes uh, for normally times. So. Uh, on that time, I uh, told you about uh, most of the times we are spending with our vendors. Okay. And, and, telephone. Uh, and when do you next expect to make a telephone call? Uh, truly speaking, I don't have idea who and whom will call to me uh, uh, because uh, uh, everyone, if uh, if you uh, definitely uh, specific days are here because, because we are working in starting of the days, most of the uh, HRs or different uh, peoples are always trying to make uh, may, may call us and uh, in uh, middle of the days we are regular, uh, normally free because uh, though we don't receive most of the calls and though people are always in the startings always uh, deliver all all the things when what do um, you prefer a telephone call or sending a text message uh, well bots are uh, meaningful and bots are uh, pawns and prawns and crowns are available at, at uh, same times uh, because if we are uh, talk, if we talk about if we are in uh, a meeting or in different institution definitely we can't uh, try to, we are always try to receive a mess instead of calls and uh, when we, whenever we are free feel free and we are uh, feel comfortable and we are alone definitely we uh, we collect calls and uh, make call to the other person. Thank you very much. Uh, your part one is over. Part, one, part two is going to start. All right. And I'm going to give you a toss card or a cue card right now. So you have that uh, in your possession for one minute. And you are also being given a paper and a pencil to make notes if you like. So this is the time for brainstorming. Uh, think about different things regarding this uh, cue card. And then you'll have to speak on this topic for two minutes when I'll ask you to start. All right. Guys, you will help me out when, uh, after a completion of one minute. And when you would start speaking after a completion of two minutes, please, you would just raise your hands. Your time's up, please. All right. Uh, that uh, I'm talking about uh, 2018. Uh, uh, I was at work and uh, suddenly my uh, restaurant manager came to me and uh, called to me and that time he said to me, please uh, provide your passport. Uh, I was very... Uh, um, uh, confused that time why he's asking about my passport so when uh, after that I uh, went to the uh, on uh uh, up my own destination and uh, meet my uh, seniors and uh, I provided my passports for them and uh, that time he uh, uh, informed me uh, because uh, we have achieved a, a yearly uh, 
ceremony and uh, we have uh, the company has been announced for uh, uh, to vis for visit uh, in the, at dubai so uh, we provided the passports and after a few days uh, they have uh, provided a return our passports and uh, we went to uh, uh, dubai uh, for uh, uh, for our uh, uh, journey and uh, that was the amazing time for us and uh, uh, because I, I I was not expect, expecting and that things and uh, when uh, we, that was around uh, three hours travels after that uh, we went to the Dubai that Dubai was the uh, hottest place uh, I, I was not understanding uh, the language of those, those peoples what they are saying but we had a, a lot uh, we had a tool of uh, English language so that was amazing time for me and after that uh, one of my friend came at Dubai uh, he received for received me and uh, he uh, dropped at the uh, hotels and uh, after that when we reached at the hotel that was amazing we we were uh, living around uh, 24th floors and uh, uh, that is the locations around in the middle of uh, dubai so uh, that was our first experience and our there and uh, at that first night we went to the uh, burj khalifa uh, we were feeling that that is very near very very closest to us but when we travel that was around one hour uh, longer than for, from our uh, hotel so uh, after that we came back uh, at uh, our hotel and uh, try to uh, sleep at night night that was the first night at dubai and we were uh, very excited at that moment uh, that had around uh, one week uh, uh, tour of, of uh, dubai over there uh, so after second day uh, we did not wake up for uh, lunch or we didn't wake up, wake up for uh, breakfast we well, thank you very much indeed your part two is over and you have spoken enough on your part two. Okay, now we're going to start your part three. Um, uh, you know, uh, generally speaking, actually, we have uh, the combination of part two and part three. They are the follow-up questions. Uh, but, uh, we're going to change your questions a bit, and uh, we'll ask you something about your family now. So the first question is, is family important in your country? Definitely. We are living in... Uh um, Islamic countries and our religion uh, always provide uh, teach us about our families and our friends so definitely family comes first and uh, uh, all the things if we talk about our uh, uh, in our countries definitely uh, peoples of uh, our for, for parents always provide us teach us and uh, provide us the uh, different kinds of uh, aspects of lives and teach us uh, definitely our uh, uh, they are very important for us in our lives and if you talk about in the uh, uh, different uh, countries they are living alone and they don't have manners uh, they uh, in the past they when the people the uh, parents uh, get old definitely uh, they uh, send at uh, old home that is uh, very uh, I don't think so uh, in our culture this is not acceptable and we are we people always uh, don't try to uh, these things in our cultures and uh, we want okay fine um, do you think that the size of the family has changed over the last few years yeah if we talk about previous uh, exactly the children uh, the family has uh, got the families the, most of the families have got uh, lots of uh, children's like uh, 8 to 12 to uh, 8 to 10 uh, children's but nowadays pe peoples are uh, living uh, uh, neutral so uh, uh, if you talk about on it and uh, the children are lesser than the previous and two or three children are available at home and uh, they are uh, living uh, alone instead of pre uh, combined families so uh, these are the things are uh, as know, the things are growing and changing quite rapidly yeah uh, what do you think that the ch families would change how the families would change in the future uh, we are uh, definitely due to technology has, uh, is, has been increased and uh, the peoples are uh, watching all the things and I think uh, in the future uh, definitely p uh, families has been in uh, decreased instead of increase uh, because the peoples uh, they, they are not uh, uh, you can say uh, properly uh, providing the stuff to the families as uh, due to uh, some kind of poverty at our countries as that is the basic steps of so uh, that's the main reason the peoples uh, would uh, control uh, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, if you talk about the governments definitely uh, they are uh, 
given some instructions on it in the futures uh, because uh, rapidly the uh, if you talk about the generation is growing up in our country so they will con they will try to control or uh, go our government sh uh, will have to uh, uh, increase uh, uh, the infrastructures or uh, wealth in our country and what do the role grandparents play in your country uh, truly speaking uh, to uh, we talk about our grandparents role in our uh, uh, life is too much because uh, uh, parents always teach to uh, teach uh, uh, to the children how they can live how they can uh, talk to the peoples what are your principles and how to treat uh, them uh, because uh, we will have to uh, we have limitations in our culture like we are uh, living in uh, Islamic countries and we will have to follow them and uh, if we talk about in the Western countries they don't have uh, manners they don't have uh, cultures uh, related to Islam so uh, the most of the precious time and the role of our forefather is uh, captivating so I really appreciate them and uh, will try to get those stuff uh, in, in, in future and uh, in present uh, as thank well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Adil Bant. It's been a pleasure talking to you today. Uh, it's been a wonderful time. It's spent in your company and uh, have a very good weekend as well. Uh, now, uh, your time's up. Uh, basically, our speaking module is based on four different things. Number one is fluency and coherence. Number two, lexical resource, what is known as vocabulary. And then a grammatical range and accuracy. And the fourth one is component is pronunciation. When it comes to uh, the first part, fluency and coherence, um, you were fantastic in co you know fluency. But in coherence, there were there were little problems you were facing in continuity and organization of your ideas. Uh, fluency was nice. You you didn't stop. Yeah, there was no big pause. There was no any place where you went black. And so it, it, it was it was fine overall. Pronunciation was uh, fine too because you were understandable. We could understood uh, we could understand whatever you spoke about regarding your topics part one, part two, and three. Um, there were certain areas in which uh, you were uh, you're muffling your sound or perhaps were not conveying exactly what you want to say. Um, uh, on the other hand, grammatical range or uh, there were certain very uh, big problems you were facing in grammatical range and accuracy and other serious problems. But anyway, um, uh, I would like to give you a band six score in your IELTS speaking test. If you happen to just perform like this in the examination hall in front of the examiner, you will be given, uh, you know, very comfortably these kind of band scores. And you were also making certain mistakes, but you were so you were also using a good quality words, for example, fancy vocabulary like captivating and uh, hospitality industry, and you also used uh, beautiful connector like uh, you know uh, like uh, truly speaking. Um, the problem you made uh, it was uh, one of the friend you told, and that that's one of the friends. When we use the phrase one of the, we use always. Uh, you know, plural form after that. You know. So one of the friends, one of the actors, one of the teachers, it should have been like this. And moreover, um, um, you know, also spoke, I don't think so. You said, I don't think so. While starting the sentence, we never speak, I, do, I, do, I think so, I don't, uh, I don't think so. You, can, you can't start your sentences by using these phrases. Uh, this is actually a kind of answer when somebody asks you about your opinion, you can say, ah, yes, I think so. Yes, no, I don't think so, like this. But you can't start your sentences by using I think so and I don't think so. Um, I have given you very little details about your uh, presentation. Uh, overall, it was good. Hope to, you know, uh, to see you in a better form uh, in the next presentation. God bless you. Thank you very much indeed. And stay blessed. Thank you.